Welcome to another episode of the Mobicon Academy Spotlight Series, where we shine the light on the unseen heroes of the Dutch transportation system. Uh, today I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Brett Petzer, who is an urban mobility consultant and resident academic, I must say, uh, and who wants to talk about street trees. Why do you want to talk about street trees, Brent? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, street trees are very humble, uh, but like a lot of the work that we do, they are really just the visible end product of some quite a bit of hidden expertise yeah. upstream. And they are alive. Um, they are mature trees in this country we use. Yeah. And that means uh, that already makes quite a difference with a lot of other places um, where a project put in now will will have young saplings mm. that only in 20 years will actually deliver the, what's in the rendering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at considerable expense, Dutch cities have nurseries where they nurture street trees over decades and then plant them as mature trees so that from day one, uh, if there's supposed to be shade, there is shade. Yeah. And we, um, we're creating really the minimum conditions that cyclists, pedestrians, and lots of other people need to move through that space yeah. comfortably. Um, and that, I think, has a lot of application around the world. Yeah. So you're saying that Dutch streets look like the render a lot quicker than, than international comparison streets. <laughs> That's it. Uh, day one instead of in 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that shows uh, just a simple acknowledgement that um, if you have a system in which cars are the default and everything else is uh, optional, then you don't need to think about street no. trees. But Air conditioning, shade. That's it. Comfortable, it doesn't really matter. That's it. If you're outside. exactly right. If you're a cyclist and pedestrian, the city needs to provide the air conditioning yeah. Yeah. outdoors. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I found that um, this is already important it's becoming rapidly more important yeah. and also at a, at a very fast scale. Um, so we, I'm very happy at Mobicon that we've agreed to put some resources of time mm. into thinking and designing and imagining how the street tree and everything around it yeah. might look in a different context. Right. And the, the, the Dutch is not, or the Netherlands is not necessarily known for its hot and humid weather yet right but we do have a lot of cyclists um on a hot day here what how would you operate do you choose a different route do you try mm. and find those shady streets do you choose to ride along the water what do you how how do you how does a, a, a cycling city operate in the hot instead of the other way around yeah i think that's a really great question and as you said it i could have already imagined for myself that i know this summer i have changed my route yeah beautiful that the network gives alternatives um, and that I've changed my route uh, just as I might in winter uh, for yeah, surface, yeah. you know, for road conditions, um, going exactly as you say, along a canal, wherever there's continuous shade cover, and especially where there are not cars, uh, yeah. because they themselves are a big source of heat injecting yeah. it at street level. Yeah. Um, and this has come up uh, more and more in the work that we do. Mm -hmm. You travel to speak about to people in many cities about cycling. Yeah. I have gotten some of your assignments to travel. Mm -hmm. One of them was uh, Dubai, where I got Hot. the, the yes. question. <laughs> it's 2024. There are times in summer when daytime conditions are incredibly uncomfortable here. Yeah. Why should we invest in a cycling network now when we cannot guarantee that in 20 years, the city will be cyclable all year round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find that a very fair, yeah. very fair yeah. reasonable yeah. question. Yeah. And I would like that in the future, when I get that question again, we are more prepared mm. um, to give uh, people a useful answer, real design yeah. uh, precedents, real drawings, starting with the street tree. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be because if you're gonna have even one tree in a street, the whole street needs to be an ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. Somebody needs to be responsible for the health of the soil, mm. how water moves. Yeah. Um, suddenly we're moving from our focus on a lot of dead things, uh, cement, asphalt, uh, paint, metal, 
kept uh, everything really under the tire of the cyclist to what's above the cyclist's head yeah, yeah. Um, and around them. And that's a dimension that Dutch cities just have. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited to sort of excavate that a little, pardon the pun, and bring it to the fore a little bit more, show why it deserves the investment yeah. that it tends to get here, yeah. but not everywhere. And now I think we can embark on a very exciting journey to rethink our classic Dutch designs, yeah. knowing that there'll be there will be a need for them everywhere. Yeah, 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 exactly. Including yeah. in this country. Yeah. And that so that covers kind of the question, what is it and do we need it? Um you've mentioned it a little bit, I think, but the what we're moving towards or what what we're saying to cities in those warmer places or cities that are gonna be warmer, which is I guess most cities, um, that they need to think about not just the street tree, but the street tree network, right? Absolutely. That you like Amsterdam doesn't have a dedicated summer cycling network, but it's just inherent mm. in the design and you see it in people's choices, like your personal choices about where to cycle, but it, it's kind of organically grown. Mm. Um, but other countries can learn from that experience and kind of leapfrog them and say, leapfrog Amsterdam and say, oh, we're going to intentionally plan a shade network that has you know, is, is more comfortable conditions for cycling in summer, right? That would be a nice, uh, that absolutely. would be good advice for cities like Bangkok or Singapore or absolutely. Dubai. Absolutely. Uh, that, I think that's hitting the nail on the head. So much of what we do is to say, yes, but what about at the network level? Yeah, yeah. Or we should solve this at the network level. I know yeah. that's, if you had a euro for every time that you've, oh, you've led that discussion. I would be retired. <laughs> so... I think that's it. Um, a shade network. Yeah. You know, we've uh, had colleagues, and I think you were involved in this, who led, who looked at the the winter cycling cycling network yeah. and yeah. the winter cycling conference. So there is a a conference, and 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 many cities doing a lot of innovative work every single year mm. to make cycling work in winter. Yeah. We don't yet have a summer cycling conference, but maybe it's not so far away. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, I think yeah. so many, as you said, um, a, a shade network, uh, a network of uh, where there's a certain climate kept within a certain parameters. Yeah. And I think that uh, we live, many of us live in aging societies. I think this is one of the smartest investments we can make yeah. uh, now and in the future. And um, I was lucky to go to Bangkok uh, on a mission where in the beginning, um, cycling humidity and heat was a problem. And by the end, it was a set of design problems. Right, right. Where we it's would- It's not a barrier anymore. Yeah, it's it wasn't the yeah, this was. Um They would say, Bangkok is humid. Yeah. That's why people don't cycle. By the end, we were looking at a sort of cantilevered clip-on uh, modular bike lane that, that could really easily be installed in cities, many, many canals. Yeah. But that, again, is a network-level solution yeah. because yeah. the canals are not the streets. Yeah. Cyclists do use them, but it had not – maybe they hadn't been to the at the forefront yet. Right, right, right. So great result for one week. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot more to do. Yeah, and there's a lot of cities like them. Yeah, that sounds great. So, so there is cities that are moving towards this um, system, like this thinking at least around – so heat is not a barrier to cycling. It's just a design consideration. That sounds very promising. Is there anything that you would uh, want to tell clients that are thinking about this? What should they do? Did they just should get started or should they just plant trees everywhere? Is there any any quick tips on, on where they should go? I think the inspiration here in my, uh, in my experience is Spanish cities. Right. Um, and like so much, it starts with mapping. Yeah. yeah. Um, of course, you said the best the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. I think it starts with mapping where there are trees, yeah. um, where there are where there is water, yeah. um, where there is uh, living elements that um, affect everything above the cyclist's head or yeah. on the side of the cyclist. Um, and the second, the step after that is really just classic network planning. Where are the yeah. gaps? Where are the roots? Yeah. Can we make it worthwhile for people to, at some time in the year, take a, a slight detour, yeah. but we reward them with a more comfortable environment? Yeah. And um, I think at the end of the day, uh, this is a network problem 
just like any other. Just like any other. And I look forward to seeing it become normalized yeah. and we'll come up with beautiful designs. But there's already been – this is an ancient problem too. Yeah, yeah true. Uh, yeah. Some of it is just remembering uh, narrow streets yeah. and shade and, you know. The Romans knew it. Yes. We, we just exactly have to get right. back to that. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for watching this episode. Uh, super interesting. Uh, not a topic we usually talk about in the Netherlands, um, but I hope it was useful. And we'll hope to see you again at the next episode of the Mobicon Academy Spotlight Series. <laughs>